In this chapter, we're going to begin making selections. Selections are probably the hardest thing to learn in Photoshop, but they're the most important. Let's get started. Okay, let's begin looking at selections. I have my Marquee 1 and Marquee 2 pictures open. They can be found in your Chapter 2 folder. And I'm going to begin with the Marquee 1 picture first. And you'll see they're both the same picture, but I'm going to show you what happens with using the Marquee tool. The Marquee tool is that rectangular tool with the dashed lines on the tool panel. And again, you'll notice because of the little triangle at the bottom of the tool on the tools panel that tells us there's hidden tools underneath. So there's actually four different kind of marquee tools. We've got the rectangular marquee tool, which allows you to make squares and rectangles, elliptical marquee, which is circles and ellipses. And then you've got two types of single row marquees that allow you to make either horizontal selections that are set at one pixel high or vertical selections that are set at one pixel wide. So let's begin with the rectangular marquee tool. The rectangular marquee tool can be used to create selections, as I just said, shaped as a square or a rectangle. So by clicking and dragging, you'll see the little crosshairs. That's where my selection will begin, and I can click and drag. And where the crosshair finishes, here I'm going to the bottom right, when I let go, that creates my selection. Command D or Control D on Windows will remove your selection, D for deselection. If I hold my shift key while drawing my selection, you'll notice that my little tool tip that's there showing my width and my height is constraining the proportion of my rectangle to a square. So that's holding my shift key. If I let go of my shift key, you'll see that now I can resize my rectangle in any proportion I want and it'll remain a rectangle and it's not constrained to the square proportions. So I'm going to select my flower, and when I release, you'll see the little dashed lines that are similar to what you see on the tool, and they appear to be moving. These are called marching ants. What this tells us is right now, our selection is inside the area of the marching ants. So if I wanted to do something to my selection at this point, I would probably want to do it to the outside of my selection, not the inside of my selection. So if I were to hit delete at this point, the fill command comes up and by default it shows content aware. I'm going to go ahead and change that to white. If I click OK, you'll see that white has replaced my selected area. And that's not exactly the effect I was going for. I wanted to remove the outside area. By using the selection tool, I can remove a portion of my document either inside my selection or outside my selection and still keep the same canvas size. So Command Z or Control Z will let me step back one step in my history of what I've just done. So I brought my picture back. So I don't want to delete the inside of my selection. I want to delete the opposite of my selection. So if I choose Select at the top of my window on my application bar and I choose Inverse, that will create the opposite selection of what I just had or the inverse of the selection. So now we see two boxes of marching ants or the selected area. So this tells us my selection actually is between those two areas, those two sections of marching ants. So if I were to press delete at this point, now it comes up as white as my contents because I changed it the last time I opened this box. If I click OK, you'll see now I have a white canvas around my picture. So instead of cropping my image, that would happen with the crop tool, if I had multiple layers, the entire document would be cropped and I would lose the canvas size. I can use a marquee tool on a layer and actually remove a portion of the image. And in this case, I'm working on my background layer and I selected white, so now I've got a white margin around my picture. Again, Command D or Control D on Windows or Select Deselect to remove those marching ants. And you'll find that sometimes if you can't do something, when you're working with selection tools, you try to do something else. Many times you'll have a selection in your image and Photoshop is preventing you from moving forward until you either commit to what you've selected or you deselect your selection. Okay, so that's just using the marquee tool, drawing a shape and making a straight edge to crop out or remove part of the image. Let's click on marquee two. If you haven't opened that yet, go ahead and open it now. Again, I've resized my document to fit just inside my window. We saw previously we can just double click on our hand to do that. And now let's take a look at the elliptical marquee. The same idea as the rectangular marquee, but now we're working with an ellipse. 
So if I click and I drag, again, I look at where my cursor is as my starting point with the crosshair. And I can click and drag and release at the location of my other crosshair. And that creates my selection. Again, I'm going to see the marching ants. And just like before, the area inside my selection is what would be affected this time and what would be removed if I press delete. Let's go ahead and press Command D or Control D to remove the selection. If we hold our Shift key while drawing with the elliptical marquee, it'll keep our selection as a perfect circle. So if we look at our tool tip, you'll notice that the width and the height are staying exactly the same. So let me go ahead and make another selection. I'm going to move my selection with the arrows on my keypad to get a better shape or area of my circle. Let me show you another trick. I'm going to Command D to remove that selection or Control D. If you hold Option on the Mac or Alt on the Windows and you click and you drag, that will draw from the inside out. So you can draw at the point of your cursor, the starting point of your cursor, and you can drag out to create your shape. Now this gives me a better perspective on the shape that I'm drawing to get it around my flower. If I held the shift key at the same time, it would constrain my proportion to a circle. Now when you're working with the marquee tool, you want to be careful not to go off of your canvas because then you're going to get a straight line on that portion. You won't get the curve. So let me start my selection again. Control D or Command D to remove the selection. I'm going to hold my Alt key or my Option key and drag out. This time I'm not going to constrain it to a perfect circle, but I want to get a nice oval around my flower. If you need to move the placement of the marquee while you're creating it, just hold down the space bar to reposition. And then I'm going to let go. So now I've got my selection. And again, just like with the rectangular marquee, if I press the delete key at this point, I'm going to lose my flower and keep the outside edge, which is not what I want to do. But before we switch our selection to the inverse, let's go ahead and do a little effect to it. Under the Select menu, we're going to point to Modify, and we're going to choose Feather. By default, the feather selection opens with a radius of 5 pixels. That's kind of small, and usually this is kind of a little guessing game that you're going to have with Photoshop because the pixels are dependent on the resolution of your image, so that has to do with how you opened your image, if you placed your image, and a lot of different variables. So usually I just kind of play around with a couple numbers to get an idea of what's going to happen, and then I figure out what number I want. Because remember, you can do Command Z or Control Z on Windows to undo the last thing you did and then try again. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to a 15, and I'm going to click OK. You'll notice it appears nothing has happened. But when I choose my Select Inverse, again, I want to select the opposite of what I have right now. I want the outside of my flower, not the inside. I'm going to choose Inverse, and we'll see my selection is now the outside edge of the document, and then the outside edge of my flower, and I press Delete. Again, I'm going to fill this with white. You'll notice now, Command D or Control D to deselect, we now have a blurred edge or a feathered edge around our flower. So let's compare that to Marquee 1, where we used our rectangular marquee. You can see the straight edge, and on Marquee 2, we've got a feathered edge.